4 through 44, about 10 verses of Scripture. If you will, when you find it, please stand, and that lets me know that you found it anyway. Praise the Lord. Everybody with me? All right. In verse 34, Jesus speaking said, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things shall be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. And so shall also the coming of the son of man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the generation, if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Let us pray this morning. Our Heavenly Father, as we come to you, we come, Lord, as children. Lord, aware that we need to be fed this morning, we ask God that you would feed us from your word. Lord, feed us by your spirit. Touch our hearts and our lives and draw us closer, Lord, in this hour, in this moment, in this time. We know above all things that we love you, and we know, God, that your word is already anointed. But, Lord, we ask that you'd anoint this vessel, this unworthy servant this morning, that we may be able to preach and we might be able to speak from your word and encourage this congregation and this people this morning that we would look up, knowing that we press ever forward and onward, Lord, toward the prize of the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Keep us in your love and in your keeping power and in your care, and we'll give you praise and honor and glory, for we ask it all in the name of Jesus, and for his sake we do pray. Amen and amen. In the book of John, the 14th chapter, in the third verse, Jesus said, I will come again. And I see in this 10 verses of Scripture that we've read enough Scripture, I reckon that we could preach an entire revival again. It seemed like there's so much to be seen. Never will forget my dad one night that he came to the church, and I had preached a fairly lengthy message, and he said, Son, he said, you don't have to preach it all in one service, but I'll tell you, you see so much good about the Scripture that sometimes it's hard to find a place to cut away from where that you want to. But in the Scriptures here that we're talking about, I saw in verse 40 and 41 that Jesus said that he was coming for a people and that he was going to have a people. The world would have you to believe and Satan would try to tell you that nobody's going to be ready to go when Jesus comes, but that's a trick and a lie of the devil. If you believe it, say amen. amen. God's going to have a people. Amen. He says right here in verse 40 and 41, he said there are going to be some that are going to be on the rooftop, said some are going to be in the fields, said one's going to be taken and the other's going to be left, said there's going to be two women at the wheel grinding, said one's going to be taken and the other's going to be left. God's going to have somebody ready to go when he comes after his people. Praise the Lord. And by the help and the grace of God, it's my intent and my intention almost 40 years ago to be a part of those that are found working and busy at the Father's business. Hallelujah. I'm so glad this morning that God has got a people. Hallelujah. He's got a remnant. I looked in that word remnant one time and it said that it was a people that had come through a perilous test or temptation or trial, a people that's come through something. God's going to have a people that are going to be ready regardless of what the enemy may tell you. He would have you to believe that nobody's ready. 
And I, I know this morning that we've heard this uh, little story, this little scenario that everybody down at the church ain't nothing but a bunch of hypocrites and there ain't no sense going and, and no sense being a part of that. And you know, we hear a lot of times young people said, preacher said the church is dead, but Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I'm telling you, if the church is dead, there's something the matter with the people. This old building's got no life in it. These pews don't get up and walk, but I'm glad this morning that God's got a people and he said where he was that he came to bring abundant life. Hallelujah. If you're alive this morning, raise your hand and just praise the Lord this morning. I'm glad this morning that I'm alive in Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm not dead. Hallelujah. I'm dead to the things of this world, but I'm alive in Jesus forevermore. Hallelujah. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Glory to God. He's coming after a people. Hallelujah. And he said, my sheep know my voice and another will they not follow. I'm glad that this morning when the Spirit of the Lord comes uh, and the Holy Ghost moves, he's going to move on those that know him and that know his voice. Amen. God's looking for a people. He's got a people. You said, Brother Winston, I wish I could feel like you do. You can. You ever get up feeling bad? Get up morning. Sometimes I twist and turn and try to get my head and my neck to where it feels good. The times I got up this morning, I'd done this and done that, and it began to pop and crack. Sounded like a bunch of popcorn. I have the same hurts and the same aches and the same pains. But I want you to know something. I'm not going to let them keep me down and hold me back. Made up my mind and purposed in my heart. Going to see what's at the end of the way. Sure, we all got problems. Everybody's got troubles. Everybody's got things that they have to go through with, but it's how that you handle it is what makes the difference between Christians. I'm not going to let things keep me burdened down. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going on. Hallelujah. I want to see what's at the end of the way. Got a little bit of salt in the oats this morning. I've come to the water and I've drunk and I found that the water's sweet and the water's fresh. Hallelujah. It's good this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We got something to be thankful about this morning. We got something to praise the Lord. He said he was coming back. He said he was coming for his people. He said he was going to have a people, and we can be that people. Hallelujah. We can be that people this morning. Old Dean over here just started on the way. There's a lot of things he don't understand this morning. But I'm going to tell you the further that we go and the deeper that we dig and the higher that we climb with the Lord, the better it gets. Somebody wrote, wrote a song some years ago. It says, sweeter gets the journey every day. Serving Jesus really pays. Oh, I get happy in a special way. Oh, sweeter gets the journey every day. That's the way I feel about it. It gets better. It gets better. And it gets better. And it gets gooder. That's not good English, but it's still good. I'm glad this morning that it gets better the more that we walk with the Lord and the closer that we get to home. He's coming after a people. He's coming after a people. He's going to have a people that's ready. He's going to have a people that's looking for him. He's going to have a people that's on fire. He's going to have a people that's filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, but Brother Whistler, we don't do things like we used to. No, we don't. No, we don't. And Brother, I'm telling you, I thank God there's some things that we don't do like we used to. We used to pray people through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We get down one hundred and turning him loose, and one saying, "Praise the Lord," and, and one said, "Said say glory just as hard and as fast as you can." And there was a man had a hand just about the size of a ham that slapped me across the back one night. I thought he was going to knock me plumb through the altar. I was down on my knees praying and seeking God. I didn't know what it was and what I wanted. I was there to said, "Lord, I'm hungry for the Holy Ghost." Then it's a wonder that anybody ever got filled with the Holy Ghost 40 years ago, but we did. But Brother Parsons, the night that I went to the altar, I came to the altar and I said, Lord, I'm going to be filled with the Holy Ghost tonight. Don't intend to get up. I don't intend to go home. I'm going to be filled with your spirit. I must have you. I can't make it. I can't walk. And I had on a pair of charcoal brown or charcoal black slacks. You remember? I don't know whether you're old enough or not, Brother Parson, but you remember them black, black charcoal pants and them pink shirts and little bitty thin black knit ties that we used to wear. Man, I'm telling you, that was the style. I had a pair of them on. 
I got down to the altar that night. I got to praying and seeking for the Holy Ghost. Brother Junior, just as sure as I'm standing here, I felt my pants rip right down the seam. And right, I'm talking about they ripped all the way. I had made up my mind I wasn't going to get up. One of the men took his coat off and tied it around my waist, and I kept on seeking God. I'm telling you, I got filled with the Holy Ghost that night. It don't make no difference if the seat of your pants is busted out. That's all the devil wanted me to do was to get up and get worried about where my pants was busted out. But the Lord seen my needs, seen a hungry heart, seen a heart that had been cleansed by his blood and sanctified, and the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost right there on Ogden Street almost 40 years ago. I'm so thankful today that he'll fill you when we make up our minds and purpose in our hearts that we really want to be what God wants us to be. Honey, when you get hungry for the Lord, he's got a table that's spread and the only thing we got to do is go to the table and feast ourselves at the table of God. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you all the way even into the end of the world. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but his word's going to stand. He said what he meant and meant what he said this morning. Church, we can have this morning the power of the Holy Ghost and the moving of God in our hearts if we're willing to pay the price and come to the table of God. He said, you have not because you ask not. Hallelujah, you can blame it on the preacher because you're dead and dry and not getting fed. That's a trick and a lie of the devil. I've got some of the greatest blessings riding down the road in an old panel truck and felt the spirit of the Holy Ghost move in and God began to bless my heart and my life. I'm telling you, you can get fed on your job. You can get fed in the house. You can get fed in the quiet of the morning. You can get fed early in the morning. You can be fed in the moon time hour. It's not the time nor the place. But it's when we touch Jesus. When we touch Jesus. Oh, Brother Weston, the church is dead and dry. What are you doing to liven it up? What are you doing to liven it up? You know, the best place to start a fire is a bunch of bucks of uh, dead wood. You ever thought about that? That's the best place in the world to have a fire. You can't do nothing but wet wood hardly. But if you really want to start a fire, and a good fire gets you some dead, dry timber. And the best place to start a fire is in a place where it's dead. Amen? Amen. Get it dead. You said there ain't no hope and ain't no life and ain't no resurrection in that. I'm telling you, Jesus walked down the road. There came a man that was being born out, a little woman bearing her son, the only son she had, on the way to the graveyard. You ever thought about that? And there was a crowd that come out of that city mourning and moaning and crying. But that crowd that was coming in with Jesus was rejoicing and being glad that they were Christian. They were in the presence of the Lord. And that crowd that was out of the city going out to the graveside, they were dead and they were crying and moaning and groaning and complaining. But they met Jesus right there sort of the gates. I can see him just as Jesus come in. And Jesus said, the little woman said, what's the trouble? She said, my only son, the only son I had is dead and not live. Said he's on his way to the graveyard. We're going to bury him. Jesus prayed for him, just raised him right up from the dead. I'm telling you, that crowd that was moaning and groaning and complaining and crying, they also were rejoicing and glorifying God. Why? Because they come in the presence of, of him who was life. Uh, if you want to be rejoicing and praising God, get in touch with the one where the life flows out from this morning. Yeah. Brother Winston, I just don't feel like shouting. You don't have to feel like shouting. If you'll never praise God in the natural, you hear what I'm telling you? You'll never praise him in the spiritual. You hear what I'm telling you? If you don't ever begin to praise the Lord, whether you feel like it or not, you'll never be blessed of God. Well, Brother Winston and I just don't believe that. you got to first say, praise the Lord. You say, well, I don't feel nothing. Praise the Lord. Glory, hallelujah, praise the name of Jesus. It don't take long till something begins to turn over in your soul. If there's anything there to turn over, you'll begin to be turned on, hallelujah. Something's going to move. If there's any fuel in the tank, I'm telling you, when you spark the fire and you get that thing, something, something's got to go. Something's got to move. If there's any fire there, when you start to praise the Lord, something's going to turn. That little crowd made their way. They went out rejoicing. 
Jesus is coming after a people that's ready. Jesus is going to have a people. He's coming after a people that's working and that's busy. That crowd said it was in the field. There will be a rapture. Amen? There's going to be a rapture. You know, we used to play a game when I was just a child. Kids, today you got to spend $89 and $100 on G.I. Joe. When I was growing up, we all got out, we got together, nobody didn't have G.I. Joe. We didn't know nothing about G.I. Joe. So we entertained ourselves. Boys played hopscotch just like the girls did. And we played a game called hide and seek. Brian, you ever remember playing hide and seek? We'd play hide and seek, and somebody would be it. And I, we'd go find a tree. See, we was too poor. We didn't have one of those little circles that you have to buy and pay a, uh, 15 or $20 for a circle to stand in. We, we didn't have nothing like that. We found a tree. And you laid your head up against the tree, and you began to, uh, began to count. If you couldn't count to 100, you counted best you could. And I'm telling you, we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Here I come. Ready or not. There's going to come a time when the Lord's going to step out and he said, I'm coming, ready or not. Hallelujah. Whether you like it or whether you don't, whether you're ready, whether you're not, whether you're in or whether you're out, I'm glad I can be in. Hallelujah. I'm glad this morning I'm a part of the family of God. If Jesus comes this morning, I'm ready to go. Hallelujah. And ready or not, he's coming. Ready or not, he's coming. Ready or not, here I come. Glory to God. I don't know how you feel about that thing, but I'm looking forward to it. Jesus is going to step out across the, the portals of glory. He's coming back in the air. He's coming after his church. He's coming after his bride. Hallelujah. And the Bible said the dead in Christ shall rise first. You know, there was folks that was worried about those that was buried. Paul said, don't worry about those that are asleep. He said, for they which are alive will not hinder them which are asleep. Is what he said in there in Thessalonians. But he said, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Hallelujah. You some so said, I, I sure would love to be out to the graveside. Honey, it ain't going to be that way. The Lord said, some are going to be on the rooftop in one place. He said, others are going to be in the field working. Not too many people work in the fields anymore, but they're going to be two working in the field. The Lord said they would. He said, they're going to be some at the mill grinding. You may be over yonder running a looping machine in a hoser mill. They may look around and your machine may be still going around and around. There ain't going to be nothing there for no toe sewing done. You may be working over yonder on a, on a housetop, putting a roof on top of a house. And you turn around and say, hey, said, have me some more shingles, but the man's going to be gone. May no tell him where you're going to be. You may be in an automobile riding down the road. And there may be somebody driving. And you look over and start to say something. Say, turn the radio up or turn the air conditioning on. And the driver's going to be gone. This is what the Lord's trying to say. He said he's going to have a people. They're going to be ready. He was coming again, ready or not. Didn't make any difference. But whether you're ready, whether you're not, the Lord's coming. Amen. Amen. Then I looked over in that scripture. And I began to see a few other things. And as I wrote these things down, I said, Lord, I said, what do you mean? I see over in verse 36, no one knows the day. But the Bible said Jesus gave us the words of warning in 37 and 38. He said, but as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be at the coming of the Son of Man. He said, but of that day and that hour, I'm reading thir verse 36, knoweth no man, no, not the angels in heaven, but my Father only. Had a little woman that was in the church in Rockingham a number of years ago. Her folks, they got over there in the month of May, I believe it was in the month of May, over close to Charlotte. They sold everything they had and went over to a cave because the Lord was supposed to come on a certain day. She was a part of that group. Thank the Lord she got saved and got a touch from heaven. Got her name written in the Lamb's Book of Life and quit worrying about what day the Lord was coming. Had a little woman in the church at Graham. She said, Brother Wisdom, she said, I don't even believe in hell. She said, I don't believe in hell. You know what I told her? I said, you know the best thing for you to do then? I said, you better live as though there is one. And I said, it don't make no difference whether you believe in it or not. See, it don't make no difference whether you believe in hell or not. I don't, I'm not trying to shun hell. 
I believe in heaven this morning. I, 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 I've got my eyes and gold to be able to go to heaven. But whether I believe in hell or not has nothing to do with it. It don't change it. It ain't going to change it this morning whether you believe there's a hell or not. But one thing about it is this. I'm going to preach that there's a hell to shun. I'm going to preach that there's a heaven to gain. And suppose that I'm right and you're wrong. Well, Brother Whistler, what do you mean? Just exactly this. Suppose that you wake up one morning and you lift your eyes up in hell. That's what the Bible said. And then you see there's a difference between hell and the lake of fire. Now, we preached over the years, and sometimes we didn't know any different, but there is. Because the Bible said that the white throne judgment's going to take place toward the ending of the, of the millennial reign. That white throne's going to come down out of heaven, and Christ is going to be the, the judge. The Word is going to judge us. Our lives are going to be put on one side, and, and the Word's going to be placed on the other, and they're going to have to balance out. Amen? And the Bible said death and hell and the grave are going to give up the wicked dead. And everything's going to stand before God on that white throne judgment. And the Bible says also that the beast and the false prophet are already in the lake of fire. I'm talking about at that time that we're talking about where it was written. You read over there, 20, 21st chapter of the book of Revelations. The Bible says Satan will be loose for a little season to seek and devour whom that he may. And then Jesus, uh, the Bible says that the Lord is going to cast Satan into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet are. Now that's what it says. So he's already there. So I'm saying there's going to be a judgment. So hell is going to give up its wicked dead. You say, where is, where is everybody? If you die this morning, you're going to go to hell. But there's coming a time when you're going to stand before God at the white throne judgment. If your name is not found written in the Lamb's book of life, the Bible said you're going to be cast into the lake of fire, which is an altogether different place. Where are they at? I don't know. But I do want you to know this morning that there is a hell. And there is a heaven. And that God's coming after his people this morning. And that there are going to be some people that are going to be ready. And there's going to be a rapture. There's going to be a catching away. Well, the word rapture is not even mentioned in the Bible. I know it's not. Not found anywhere. If you've got a Strong's Concordance, you go to it, you find out in the connotation there's not the word rapture even mentioned. It says the catching away. And there are going to be many catchings away. If you read the book of Revelations, and there's no time to go into that this morning, but there are going to be a number of catchings away. 144,000 is going at an altogether different time uh, than, than those that, uh, uh, that will go at the, at the rapture that we talk about, the catching away of the church. There's going to be two men that's going to be brought here. They're going to preach. They're going to live. They're going to die. They're going to be caught away. And then you've got a, a number that are without number that are dressed in robes of spotless white. They're going to be caught away. The Bible said these are they that came up through the great tribulation. There are a lot of different people. We've, we've, we've got a great number that's going to be caught away. But somewhere between the third chapter and the beginning of the fourth chapter of the book of Revelation, the church is taken away. And that's what I want to be a part of. That's what I want to be a part of. There's no further mention of the church after the third chapter of the book of Revelations and the first two or three verses in the fourth. There's no mention. But I'm so thankful that the church is going to be taken away. The bride and the body of Christ is going in the rapture. So there's going to be a rapture. And then I looked on down just a little bit further, and I found out that there are going to be some things that are going to happen after the rapture. Panic and terror and fear will come upon the earth suicides, heart attacks. The Bible said men's hearts failing them for fear. The church will fill up with weeping and crying, great sorrow. Uh, I, I read somewhere, Brother uh, Parsons, they said that the Chicago Tribune in their printing vault have already got the headlines printed up for the day of the rapture. After the rapture has come, they've already got it raptured, raptured. In other words, the church is gone. The story's been wrote, I've been told. And it may not be so anymore, but it was a number of years ago. Newspaper headlines are going to read, Jesus Christ has come for his church. Jesus has come and the church is gone. I, I, I read somewhere it said plane crashes, hundreds of dead, pi autos are piled up, thousands are missing, unexplained, riots uh, in the churches. Ministers are hurt and attacked because they didn't preach the word, and didn't preach the truth. Then the Bible uh, leads me to believe that some churches are going to be destroyed, defaced. 
And moms and dads are going to be cursed for their children. Men's hearts, the Bible said, failing them for fear. I wrote these things down. Could you think about that? Mama, you've gone to church all your life, but you never told me the truth. Daddy, you've gone to church all your life and never told me the truth. But that ain't going to be an excuse. You see, when we stand before God, we're going to be held accountable. Every man, woman, boy, and girl that's been under the sound of my voice this morning is going to be held accountable. Going to be held accountable. I'm here to tell you that Jesus is coming soon. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. What's it going to take to be ready to meet him? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? There's the secret. That's the secret. Are your sins under the blood? You say, Brother Wisnett, I, I, I can't do this. Let me tell you something. Make a decision for the Lord. Make a commitment with Christ at an old-fashioned altar. Ask him to come into your heart and into your life and to forgive you of your sin. The Bible said if we'd ask him, he would forgive us of our sin and cleanse our hearts and our lives. You say, Brother Wisnett, what have I got to do? You got to keep on going on for the Lord. Are you going to make mistakes? Yes, you are. That's what you got a preacher for is to help you. That's what you got elders in the church for. That's what you got ladies in the church for is we lean on one another. You got a problem that you don't understand. The ladies, you can't talk to your pastor. You don't feel like maybe you can talk to his wife and you don't know him that good. Go talk to Sister Parsons. She's been around long enough. She'll tell you the truth. Go talk to Glenda. She's a young Christian. She can tell you what she's gone through with. Well, Brother Weston, I didn't have so much trouble before I started serving God. Dean, you lost friends that you thought was friends, but you've made new friends. You're going to make more new friends. That's the way it goes. Why well, I didn't have to fight the devil. Why should you have to fight him? He already had you. You've entered into a warfare. You chose up sides. As long as you go along just blind and just take things as they go and just sort of drift along, it don't make no difference. I'm telling you, the Lord's coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. I say it again, Jesus is coming soon. Be ready to go. Be ready to go. That's the secret. I've heard it all my life. I've preached it about all my life. But I'm telling you, it's nearer and it's closer and it's more right now upon us than it's ever been before. All the signs of the times are around us. Wickedness is growing and turning around everything. Man, you can't hardly get people married till they're divorced and separated. That's a sign of the coming of the times. The Bible says that they're going to be marrying and giving in marriage. Had a little boy down in Rockingham sit down there around a the little campfire, and, and we talked with them little old boys. Started out with about one or two or three in the church. Uh, and you know what started it? One of the ladies come to him and said, Brother Winston, my, my, my son don't have a father figure, and he really needs somebody to talk to about his problems and things. And I said, that's great. I said, well, so we started off. Next thing I know, looked around. It was 33 or 35 of them little old boys. And we, we'd uh, give them cookies and Kool-Aid and some of them come to church and some of them didn't. And this one little boy, a little red-headed boy, I'll never will forget him. He was about 10 years old. He said, preacher, said, how many times are you supposed to be married? I said, you know, the way the Bible teaches is it's one. You said, well, are you talking about me? No, I ain't talking about nobody this morning. I don't know your marital situation. I'm just telling you what the little boy had to say and the attitude of the world. He said, well, preacher, he said, I'll tell you what it is. Mama's been married five times. And he said, you know, he said, I'm probably going to try me out seven or eight, maybe ten of them before I find the right one. He said, I'm going to try them out. He said, if I marry this one and she don't work out, said, I'll get me another one. And you know, that was the attitude of a little ten-year-old boy. Now, he's probably 18 or 19 years old this morning. I don't know what his life and his marital situation is. But I tried to talk to him. I tried to tell him that the Lord intended for you to start out and stick with the one that you started with. It don't always work that way. And I know that we, we're living in a generation and a time when, when things just ain't working like the Lord wants them to work. But that's the way the Lord wanted it for our lives. And, you know, you have to start in the right direction, in the right manner, if you're going fin to finish up in the right way. And I, I want to tell you this morning that the Lord loves you and that you don't have to die and go to hell. I want to tell you this morning, if you're here, if you're walking through a hard place, I want to tell you just keep on pushing. Keep on trucking for what you used to tell me. When you have a flat tire, you get out and fix it. Amen. 
When you run low on gas, you stop at the filling station and, and you just keep on going. When it comes time to change oil, you stop and change oil. When the spark plugs need to be changed, you change the plugs. But it, that's just part of maintenance in the life that we live and going down the road for the Lord. And somewhere along the line, you pull into a truck stop and you talk to somebody about the Lord. You tell somebody about Jesus. And some of them get along and get on that same bus and get on that same truck and we start traveling together. That's what being a Christian is. That's what a church is all about. We're all going toward heaven and we're trying to help one another make it. Brother Mullins, I want to see you there. I haven't been around you long, but I learned to love you. Brother Junior, I want to see you there. I, I'm about the same way. We haven't known one another long, but we're learning to love one another. And you know, we want to encourage one another. Jesus is coming soon. No time to give up. No time to become discouraged. No time to be despondent. No time to sit down on the side of the road and say, well, my cross is too heavy. But it's time to begin to move forward. Let's take somebody with us. Let's tell somebody about Jesus. Let's let somebody know that Christ is the answer and the hope for eternity. But not only, he's hope for right now. I wouldn't want to go another day without Jesus. I wouldn't want to try to live a day without the Lord. I started off as a young man, about Sam's age over here. I, I, I made the awfulest mess. mess. I mean, I, I, I did a lot of things I ought to have done, didn't do. A lot of things I should, should have done done that it didn't do and things that it did do that ought not to done. I'm talking about even after I became a Christian. You might as well be, just be plain about it. I know what it is to be a young Christian and getting started. When I was just a little boy, little bitty thing, I had a problem. I had to wear diapers. See, it wasn't house broke. But Mama took that old diaper off. She cleaned me up. And she'd washed me up. And she didn't throw me out because I'd made a mess. Put a new diaper on me. But to come a time, Mama house broke me. You know what I'm trying to say? And just because a young Christian makes a mess, I'm not talking about that kind of mess. I'm talking about they make a mess of their lives. Better not throw them out. Better not get rid of them. Go put your arms of love around them and say, listen, come on. Keep on trying. I got picked up after I was a Christian in a place where I ought not to have been. Young man by the name of Carol Cooper and myself was running around some then. And we went into a pool room, shoot some pool. I was broke. Didn't even have the money to buy a game. It's bad when you can't pay 10 cents to play a game of pool. But I didn't have a dime. This boy was putting the money down on the table and paying for the games. And we were just playing just for, like we would if it was in your living room. Wasn't gambling. Wasn't nothing. And I didn't know they'd been selling ball tickets. And I didn't know they were selling things like that there. And here come the city police, the city of High Point. And they raided that place. And here I was supposed to be a Christian. And I got picked up in that thing, and they didn't take me to jail, but they gave me, a, gave me a citation. I had to go to court. Now, I want you to know it appeared in the paper, and Brother Parsons, I said, oh, my Lord, the people at the church ain't going to understand. We were just two boys out on a Saturday night. We were in a place where we ought not to have been. We wasn't doing anything wrong. We wasn't cussing. We wasn't telling dirty jokes. We had a wooden stick in our hand knocking however many balls that there were and trying to knock them all in the pockets. We were just in the wrong place. You know, the devil could have took that brother Swenson and destroyed me. I could have give up, but you know, I had a pastor that loved me and he come down the road and he put his arms around me and he said, son, he said, listen, he said, everybody's made mistakes. He said, everybody, he said, I got confidence in you. He said, keep on living for the Lord. Keep on loving God. Don't let the devil knock you. And he told me some things that happened to him when he first got started. And it encouraged me. Dean, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to have problems. That's the reason you got a pastor. That's the reason you got men like Brother Parsons and Brother Junior and Brother Swenson and Brother Blankenship and Brother White and Brother Mullins 
got men like that through this church to tell you and to help you. You got a problem, don't throw up your hands and quit. Keep on trucking. You young men, keep on going for the Lord. Don't let the devil destroy you. You young ladies, if you get into trouble and you have problems, don't throw up your hands and quit and fall out with God. My Lord, we can't afford to fall out with God. Let's find out what the problem is and just keep on going. Keep on living for the Lord because Jesus is coming soon. You see, let me tell you something. It makes no difference. He said, I say to you, sin not. But if you sin or when you sin, I believe it says when. He said, but when you sin. He said, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. We have a high priest that we go back and said, Lord, said, I made a mess again. I made a mess again. I'm not telling you to go out here and willfully sin. I'm not telling you to go out here and plan to do wrong. But I said, when you do wrong, when you make a mistake, don't let the devil kick you down into the ground and grind you out. Realize that you are a child. And you belong to the Lord. And we can go run into our Father and he'll take care of it. He'll pour in the oil and he'll pour in the wine and he'll bandage it all up. And he'll straighten us all out and tell us to go on now, son. Now, be careful now. And, and, and when you run, if you fall and you skin the other knee and you get up. And I used to go run into Mama. Wasn't no good to cry, Brother Swenson, until I got to Mama. I mean, why cry? Because wasn't nobody there to pat me on the back and pull me to her and say that she loved me. Wasn't nobody there to make that hurt feel better. So, you know, you'd run. You might run for half a mile. And then you get out and side of mom and you'd start to cry and them old tears would be running down your face and you're just squalling because you wanted somebody to put their arms around you and say hey I love you let me tell you something that's just the way it is with the Lord you can call on to the Lord you can cry to him and he's there at every moment and hour never to leave us never to forsake us hallelujah always just at our beck and call isn't it good that we got a Lord and a God that loves us and we can just pour it all out and he'll take that other knee and he'll take it and cleanse it out and straighten it up and he'll pour in some oil and pour in some wine and wrap it up real good and I'm talking about a spiritual need this morning and he'll send us on our way and you know mama used to pat me on the bottom she said now go on boys and, and watch yourself and don't hurt yourself and wasn't careful I'd done run and run too fast and old big feet getting away and I'd fall and run out down through there in the gravels and, and I done messed up both hands and mama comes she'd pour it out and she'd clean it up and she'd pour a little iodine or a little bit of, uh, of mercury chrome or something brother on it said now son go on and don't fall be careful. You know, that's the way it is. But I, I'm glad this morning, this old body's scarred in different places, got scars here and scars here and all up and down through here and around my knees, across my knuckles and all the places, got scars all over it. But I'm still going. Now, I, uh, this old spiritual man this morning is scarred, Brother Parsons. I, I've been beat around and knocked around and banged around by the enemy, but I'm so glad that Jesus has never hurt me, never done me wrong. He always binds me up and takes care of me. Hallelujah. Because he's coming again, coming again, coming for his people this morning. Let us stand this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Ready or not. Ready or not, he's coming soon. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known, and what watch, that the thief would come, he would have watched and would not his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready. This is what Jesus said. Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Are you ready? Are you ready? If the answer comes back from your heart this morning, no, I'm not. You see, you know whether you're ready or not. You can be a good boy, good girl, and still be lost. A lot of good people are going to go to hell. I said a lot of good people. It takes more than being good. Brother Weston, I don't drink, smoke, cuss, dip, chew. I don't go to the places a lot of people go that says they're Christians. You're not going to be held accountable for what other people do or don't do. You're going to be held accountable for one thing. Are you sin under the blood? I believe this morning if I ask you the question, are you ready to go? I believe the answer's already come back. There's something rings forth in the heart and the life of a Christian. Yes, I'm ready to go. If I ask you this morning as a sinner, 
Are you ready to go? If Jesus was to come right now, would you be ready to go? There's something that's rung back into your heart said, no, I'm hell bound. I'm lost. I'm lost. Let us pray this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we've come, we've done the best that we know how. God, I, I don't know how to give an altar call. I, I wish I had the words that I could just say the words and magically, Lord, that men would just come and their hearts would be loosened. But Lord, you deal with us gently. You deal with us kindly. And Lord, now I ask that your special Holy Ghost, that third person of your precious Godhead, would go forth and deal with the hearts and the lives of this congregation. Lord, that you'd speak to that young man this morning about his sin, that young lady, Lord, that needs to be touched by your hand. And God, that they would surrender this morning. If there's anything, Lord, that we need to come back to the church is old-time conviction. God, we pray this morning that old-time conviction, Lord, would touch hearts and lives in this place. And any man, woman, boy, or girl that's lost without Jesus, Lord, we'll not leave this place without you. I give a special invitation to you this morning. I believe you meet me around this altar. And confess your sins. The Bible said he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin. Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I believe you'd come this morning. Jesus will save you. I ask you, would you come right now? Would you come? You put it off too long. Brother Whistler, I've got a lot of things I needed to do and I intend to do. That's not good enough. Will you come this morning? Will you come? Don't stand. Don't put him off. But Brother Wilson, I intend to get saved. The time's running out. This scripture said, if the good man had known in what hour that the thief would have come, he'd have stayed up and watched for him. He'd have repelled him. He'd have run the thief away. But he said, be also ready. For in the hour that you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Jesus is coming soon. Brother Wilson, I've got things to do, places to go, and things to see. That's just exactly what I thought. But I've gone further, saw more, and done more since I've been a Christian than I would have ever done as a sinner. The devil shows you bright lights. The devil shows you a pretty path. But I'm going to tell you the way of the cross leads home this morning. Will you come? Will you come? My God. Lord, there's some going to leave here. They've not been persuaded. Almost persuaded. I ask God that you keep your hand of protection around about them. Lord, let the enemy of their soul destroy them. Some have heard this message so long that it seems to be old and old-fashioned and out of date. But God, I ask that the convicting power of the Holy Ghost would go with them. And God, that you keep them to the next appointed time then maybe they'll surrender their life to Jesus before it's too late. Talents going to waste. Buried in the ground of sin because they've refused to allow you to use them. Watch over us, Lord. Keep us safe. We ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Bring somebody with you tonight to the house of the Lord. I believe we've got some of as good a singing right here as you hear anywhere. I believe you've got a pretty fair country preacher. Bring folks to the house of God. I believe that 
be a blessing.